And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up. And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehosha Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord beside that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micah. Micah, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither Micah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Chinani, Chinani, Chinana, made him horns of iron. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, With these shalt thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. And the messenger that was gone to call Micah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. And Micah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee, that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord, and the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him, on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said, On this manner, and another said, On that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah the son of Chenana, I apologize. I don't know how to. Ugh. But this, but Zedekiah the son of Chenai went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek. 
or Micah on the cheek and said, which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micah and carry him back unto the Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with bread of affliction, and with the water of affliction, until I come in peace. And Micah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will despise, disguise myself and enter into the battle, but put thou on thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. But the king of Syria commanded his thirty and two captains that had rule over his chariot, saying, Fight neither with small nor great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him, and Jehosha Jehoshaphat cried out. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of his harness. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thine hand and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, and the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrians, and died at even. And the blood ran out of the wound into the midst of the chariot. And there went a proclamation throughout the host about the going down of the sun, saying, Every man to his city and every man to his own country. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. And one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria. And the dogs licked up his blood, and they washed his armor according unto the word of the Lord, which he spake. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did and the ivory house which he made and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Ahab slept with his fathers and Ahaziah his son reigned in his stead. And Jehoshaphat the son of Asa began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was thirty and five years old when he began to reign and he reigned 20 and five years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Sh Shilhai. And he walked in all, I'm sorry, that's alerts from, um, things that are going on in the Middle East and things like that. And he walked in all the ways of Asa, his father, and turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for the people offended and burnt incense yet in the high places, and Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his might that he shewed and how he warred, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And the remnant of the Sodomites, which remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. There was then no king in Edom, a deputy was king. Jehoshaphat made ships of Tarshish to go to Ophir for gold. To go to Ophir for gold. But they went not, for the ships were broken at Izion Geber. I know I'm saying these horribly, I'm sorry. Then said Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, unto Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with thy servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not, and Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Jehoram his son reigned in his stead. Ahaziah the son of Ahab began to reign over Israel and Samaria the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah and reigned two years over Israel and he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother 
and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. For he sub served Baal and worshipped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel, according to all that his father had done. I'm going to reread the beginning of this because it reminds me of the um, the three and a half year uh, first part of tribulation, like the peace um, before it gets broken in the second part. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. Okay. Um, and it, I don't know, I, I have it highlighted and I'm just going to read that again. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. Um, we know that we're in the time somewhere in the times of that the seven years are about to start. If you don't know Jesus, come to Jesus. There's not much more time. He's coming. He's the only way to heaven. Do not die in your sins. Do not die in your sins like um, the last king. Who was it that just died in his sins? Um, he walked in the way of his father's. Ahaziah, because he served Baal and worshipped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel, according to all that his fathers had done. Don't die in your sins. Jesus is the only blood that can cover. He's the one and only final sacrifice. He died on the cross for you. He rose again the third day and he's coming. His return is imminent. It is more than soon. And the seven year tribulation is about to begin. You do not want, if you think everything is bad now, you do not want to be here. And he came to save you. He doesn't want you here either. Come to Jesus. He's calling you. He's calling you. Believe on Jesus and what he did on the cross. Talk to him as the easiest thing. Let him in. Make him Lord of your life. Say you're sorry about your sins and that he needs to help you. He covers those sins when you come to him and he helps you walk and he teaches you and he, and you learn from him, but, but just come. He just wants you to come. He knows everything. You can't hide anything from him and he still loves you. He died when we were still sinners. He died for us. He knew he knows. He even prayed for the people and um, forgave them when they were killing him on the cross because he died for everyone. He wants us all to come. He doesn't want us to die in our sins, and he's the only blood that can cover. He loved us. As he was getting hung on the cross, he prayed for them and asked God to forgive them. He laid down on that cross. No man put him on that cross. He willingly laid down that cross because he had to be the final blood sacrifice for us. He had to pay for our sins. He paid it all. Just come to him. He is coming back. Just believe. Just step out and believe. Make the decision. Believe.